doing Ball Blast Part 2 finally. Um, I know some of you guys have been asking me to do it and I haven't been like not busy lately so now I'm doing it and yeah hopefully that's good. Also I uploaded all of my files um, to GitHub so if you want to access these files <clears throat> it should be there and yeah. So today we're going to be adding the background and also setting up a variable for so if, if you guys know ball blast basically a ball falls down right and then your goal is to hit it and the ball has a number on it so let's say 100 so if you hit it once it turns to 99 if you turn if you hit it again it's 98 right so we're going to set a variable for that and yeah that's going to be part two so i don't know why this is here but let's remove it okay so first, let's do the background. So I'm going to upload my sprite. And you can download this from <clears throat> you can download this from my GitHub site. But yeah, I basically got one of the pictures and I just uh, photoshopped it so that it's just the background. OK, so first, we're going to be centering it. So uh, what it's called, <clears throat> um, go to. Zero, zero. Perfect. And then, okay. So if we want the background to be like that, we should probably make the ball blast cannon smaller. So what I'm going to do, um, Oh god, no. Okay, like that, and I'm gonna make it smaller. Oh, that's way too small, actually. Or, you know what? I'm gonna make the background the whole thing. Because I feel like changing that, that would be a little bit troublesome. So I'm just gonna. Well, no oh god, it's not working. How do you select the whole page? There. Okay. So now I'll stretch it out. This probably looks bad, but you know, for the sake of it. <clears throat> Okay, that looks good. Perfect. So we don't even need this because it doesn't matter. But I'm just going to keep it anyways. So, the next part is, as you can see, the background should be at the back, right? So we're going to go to looks, and we're going to go to... Let's see. Go to back layer when it's clipped. Perfect. So then the bullet should all be good. Perfect. Okay. So the background is done. That was really quick. So next, we're going to set up a variable for the ball, like the ball to actually fall down and hit. So I'm going to create a new sprite. Perfect. I'm just going to draw a really quick circle. But next, we, like, uh, the next part next video I can try and edit a, like a hexagon which is what actually it is like the ball in the thing so okay since you can't display a variable on a, a variable on a sprite I'm just gonna have the number be like right there so that we can all know that that's our um, that's our number on the ball so, for this ball, we need it to first, when it's clicked, <clears throat> um, it has to 
go to a random uh what is it okay so probably um what is the top oh god what is the top top that you can go is it is it 174 i'm sure you can go higher okay Go to 180. Okay, that should be good. Um, actually, I think I'll go 200. Perfect. Okay, so then we are gonna set uh operator pick random and probably. Zero, negative, okay, so how far can you go? So negative two, two, three. Mm. But we probably want to see the whole ball, so how about like that? Okay, negative 200 to 200. To 200, okay. So that's going to replace that. Okay, so we're first we're going to go to X, which is between this place and that place, and then the Y has to always be 200. Perfect. There, random position, random position, random position. Perfect. Okay. So next, we need it to fall down. So we are going to slowly change Y. 10, I feel like, is too quick. I'm just going to go 5. And then maybe next we can go like, let it fall down quicker and all that stuff. Should be negative. I'm stupid. Negative. Perfect. Okay, it's falling down. Oh, it's going really slow, but okay. That should be good. Um Perfect. Okay, so that's basically the ball. And um okay. So that should be good. And when it falls to the ground, we kind of want the game to end, but I don't think we're ready for that yet. What we're gonna do, actually, yeah, let's do it. So, um, if, okay, so if, um, if, Where is it? X position. Oh god. Or Y position. If Y position. Okay, so what is this? So about like 200, right? Yeah, I would say 200. Okay, so if the Y position is equal to. Um, I would say greater than or equal to negative 200. And the game has to end. Okay, let's try. Or not greater than, gee, smaller than, less than. Smaller but there. 200. Okay, so now it should end the game if it hits the ground. Perfect. Okay. Okay, should be good. Um, okay, going like this, right, so that works. And then, now we're gonna set the variable. So I'm gonna make a variable. I'm gonna name it ball, or I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna make it value. Uh, for all sprites, okay, value, I'm gonna display value, show value, what does that mean? Hold up, I think I just found something. Does it work? No, okay. It's fine. Okay, so that's a value. Um, I'm gonna set the value to 100. 
we can do that later. So let's set it to 100 and let's create a new block. So that's the number of the actual ball. So like how many times it needs to be hit to basically be like be, I don't know, be destroyed, I guess. So when the green flag is clicked, um, when sprite one, which is the bullet, so when touching sprite one, so if the ball, sprite two, which is what we're on right now, touches sprite one, the bullet, then we are going to, if, if it touches it, oh, we're going to set a filter loop on it. Okay, so if whoever checks if it touches the bullet, if it does, um, if it does, then it starts subtracting by negative one. Okay. Okay, so let's try. Okay, so first of all, it's not displaying it as a hundred which is what it's supposed to be do. Oh, my bad, this should be value. Okay, there. So it's 100. Oh, okay, 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 it's working, it's working. Perfect. So, let me stop. 100 might be too much, or that it's falling too fast. I think it's falling too fast, so I'm just gonna go 2.5. There, let's try it out. It's still, okay, we're almost there, we're almost there. Maybe if I change the speed of the bullet. Change Y by, let's say 40. Okay, that was close, that was close. Um, yeah, I think the value is just too big. I'm gonna go with 50, just for the sake of experiencing it. Okay, 15, and boom, perfect. Okay, so now it goes to negative, which is what we're gonna fix. So, and if it touches it, basically, I'm gonna duplicate this so I don't have to repeat this. Okay, perfect. So if value is less than 100, or less than one, If value is less than one, we're gonna hide it, as in like make it like disappear. Okay, we're gonna hide it, and then we are gonna basically copy this. Okay, let's try. So basically what this does is if the value of the ball is less than one, which is zero, then you have to hide it and you have to reset the value to 50. And then you pick a random spot to go to, basically. Okay, let's see. Okay, I think it went to another place, but it didn't fall. So I'm gonna add this part, or I should probably duplicate it, this part, but I can remove this, so forever, there, so that it actually falls. Okay, okay, that's interesting. So it does Go to a random spot. Oh, I'm not re-showing it. That's the problem. Ugh, I'm stupid. Okay, so I'm gonna re-show it after it's gone to another place. So that should be good then. Boom, perfect. Ugh. Whoa, negative seven. Okay, well, that's another problem. The problem now is this goes to another place. But first of all, it falls really fast. And second of all, it goes back to negative and it still doesn't go to another place. 
So the problem is this. We need this as well because this tests if it basically touches the ground and it should end. And we also need this because if it's touching the bullet, no, this is doing it. I don't know why. Okay. Um, hmm. I think I know why. It's because this is forever, so it just stops right there and it doesn't recall it if it happens again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide it and then I'm going to take all of this. So basically, so it resets the value, it goes to a random place, and it reshows and it forever. I'm going to do I'm going to do that. I'm going to keep this here. And then I'm going to call a broadcasting message. So, let's see where is it? Perfect. When I receive message one, there's no message one anywhere. Am I using message one? I'm not. Okay. So when I receive message one, I'm broadcasting message one. Channel. So that should be fixing it, because the problem is, before this was just in the loop. So whenever this happens again, it can't because this is happening. So let me try again. And it falls really fast. For some reason, it falls really fast. So next time it is, like, it's probably because, okay, it's probably because it sets the value before it, it starts, like, I'm, okay. Because I don't know why, it falls really fast the next, the second time, which doesn't really make sense. I think, okay, I think it's probably because... Hmm. How should we do this? You know what? I don't even need this, I don't think. I'm just going to do that. Because this is running forever, I think. I think that's why it's going fast. Because I had two of those change Ys, which means it doubled the speed. So, let's see. Yes. Yes. There it is. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Now it's working. Perfect. So yeah, that's going to be part two. And stay tuned for part three, where we're going to make the ball like bounce a little bit upwards every time it's hit. And we're going to try and make it a hexagon, which is more likely and more realistic like in the game. Yeah, so thank you for joining and I'll see you in the next time.